Many, many thanks for such a warm welcome. I was so prepared for this meeting. Somehow I felt that here from Prague will go some waves, a new impetus both in Russia, in Europe, and in America. It will happen if I will have time to say all that I have planned. So I'll start at the beginning to remember everything independently. So in Russia begins perestroika. Young entrepreneurs, especially lucky ones, start a business. They dream of being millionaires. One of the entrepreneurs by the name of Megger rents a large river motor ships and the caravan goes deep to the north. Why is he doing it? To make a great business, to trade in remote areas of the north, to buy out all sorts of fur and to bring there the products of our modern civilization. Everything's going well. At the time, there were no houses of culture in north human settlements. People meet motor ships, which have a restaurant, bar, disco. People from all settlements come out to take a walk on this ship. Time goes by. I was that megger. And of course, I was proud to have such a good business. But after a while, I met two old men who started to talk about the ringing cedar. A year later, I decided to cut the cedar and went to another expedition to the north. I don't find these two old people, but I met a lonely woman standing on the shore in a quilted jacket wrapped with a handkerchief and in a rubber galoshes. To the question, do you know anything about the ringing cedar? She answered, yes. I can show you the cedar, but we need to go into the taiga 25 kilometers. And I went. Those who have read the book and here, perhaps most of you have read the book, they know that at one of the halt I sat down, drank cognac, and invited the woman to drink with me. She said, I will not drink. I'm better take a sunbath. Then she took off quilted jacket, scarf, and long skirt, and I saw a beautiful woman, which is now known in many countries by the name of Anastasia. I won't retell the whole book. I will try now to watch together with you on the events that happened then, more than 20 years ago. You all know that thanks to Anastasia, I've written nine books. Then I tripped and began to explore what I had written, what she was saying, why I began to do it because written began to explore many famous spiritual leaders of different confessions. Muslim, Christian, and scientists began to explore also. In the largest universities of Russia were held round tables, scientists' conference dedicated to the phenomenon of Anastasia. And what I wrote before, just because I was writing, because she was saying, because it surprised me. I wanted to also explore. And then I started doing this, and this is what I get. So following the Anastasia, I first met the place where she lives, her meadow. It's a beautiful place, but there are no buildings. I wrote that she can sleep just on the grass. She can sleep in the den, and she's not thinking about food. She's not thinking about food. She's not thinking about clothes at all. And initially it was amazing. And it is unclear what a person can do if she doesn't need to think about home and how to build it, what to eat and what to wear today. Everything that initially seemed extraordinary, magical, later turned out to be quite a common occurrence. Squirrels gathering nuts for her and put at her feet. If she lies on her back, throwing her hands and makes another gesture, then squirrels clear the nut from the shell and put nuts in her mouth. There are a lot of squirrels in Novosibirsk, Akadem Gorodok. They, on the contrary, jump out on the track and require food, and nobody teaches them. This year, I was again in Novosibirsk, again in Akadem Gorok, and squirrels also continue to require food. They can sit on human hands. 
they teach their new generation to cage. In the case of Anastasia, they are taught not to ask, but to give the man, and they do so for thousands of years. The main squirrel teaches other squirrels to respond to a man and give. I told in the book, Bear submits to her. It's a little bit fabulous, a little bit fantastic, isn't it? Well, how it happened, a huge bear can mess with a child to do some work under his direction. It turned out that this is also a simple matter. Before coming here, I accidentally found, and perhaps not accidentally, video where the woman digging potatoes in her household and on a neighboring bed, Bear helps her to dig potatoes. The woman turns around and says to him, be careful out there. They, if they find, will show that scene. And then I saw that all the animals created to serve man, just man lives separately from them and they grow wild. Not only camel, horse, donkey, cat, dog and snake can serve to the man. You can see for yourself on the internet how in Africa has come a boa constrictor and made friends with the little boy. People took boa away, back into the jungle. Boa turned back to the boy. And now they are friends. He sleeps on the boa because boa is cold and it is hot in the jungle. I also might add, you know in ancient times, the Slavs, we, you, we are all the same, selected cows with the help of a snake that lived in the barn. Now, looking from this position on the situation, what did Anastasia? Everything fell into place. Anastasia, her glade is his territory. Animals, wolf, bear, all the animals that live there, squirrels, they perceive her as the leader of the pack. Most importantly, promotion for these animals is when she calling them to her. But if she pet animals, it is complete bliss for them. It can be bear, the wolf, the wildest beast immediately lie on the ground, legs up, move his head in gratitude. If animals from other area will approach, they do not belong to Anastasia, but also does the dog similar to the wolf, who lives in the household. He also wags his tail, meeting the owner. Originally, Anastasia is different from other people who live with us. She is very beautiful. In her body, some kind of enormous energy that is felt from being with her. We used to see villagers or hermits who look a little bit hunched or their nails are not groomed or something else. And she's perfect. She has a sleek hands. And one more feature. When she speak, you can see what she's talking about. Like a hologram passes in front of you like a hologram. And no matter what she talking about, about antiquity, about the event, which took place five, ten thousand years ago, or about an event that happens in our lives, and she speaks such a language, rearranges the words so that what she says is remembered for many, many years, even if a person has a bad memory, like mine. I can read something from the books, but I can tell you all nine books by memory. Don't worry, I will not do it. But I will tell you about their favorite places. How come the co-creation book? They say that Megger writes using the primitive language. He writes only for the simple people. He is not a writer. He is something incomprehensible. I was hurt. I told Anastasia about it. She laughed and said, so I speak the same language in order to, first and foremost, your friends. The entrepreneurs were clear, but I can show something else. And then she blurted out in one breath the book, Co-Creation. She painted, she blurted out the whole blank verse monologue, an unusual blank verse. She first told about the feelings of God. Nowhere in the literature, neither in art nor in the ecclesiastical writing, does not say about the feelings of God. She first spoke about the creation of the earth and of man, not of matter, but from the standpoint of the senses, now that she did, scientists call metaphysics. Though this book cannot to translate into other languages with accuracy, but translators try, maybe someone will be able to do this. When I read, I enjoy this amazing picture that she painted about love, about God. So I like it when over the dew-washed grass on this festive day, in the ray of sunrise, a maiden walked toward Adam. Graceful was her walk, slender her figure, her body's curves smooth and gentle, and the tints of her skin held the light of the divine dawn. Closer and closer she came. There she was. The maiden stood before Adam. 
A breeze straightened her golden tresses, revealing her brow. The use held its breath. Oh, how beautiful her visage! Your creation, God! Lying in the grass, Adam merely glanced at the maiden who had come up next to him, yawned lightly, and turned away, closing his eyes. Well, here it is. One more creation of some sort has approached. There is nothing new about it except for a resemblance to me. Horses' knees are both sturdier and more flexible. The leopard's hide is more vivid and cheerful. Furthermore, it approached without invitation, whereas today I wanted to give the ants a new purpose. Eve, after standing close to Adam for a little while, went to a slough in the river, examined her reflection in the quiet waters. The universal essences began to murmur, and their thoughts merged into one. The two perfections were unable to appreciate each other. There is no perfection in God's creations. Only the energy of love, alone amid the universal murmuring, tried to guard the Creator. Rest, great Creator, and instill understanding in your Son. You can correct any of your beautiful creations. In response, the universe heard those words. My Son, answered the God, the Alpha and the Omega in Him, He is all of all. He first realized something was missing, and the maiden approached him does not have something new. A question filled the whole universe. What can be lacking in that which has all our energies and all your energies? And God answered them all, the energy of love. And the energy of love blazed up. But I am one, and I am yours. I shine by you alone. And God, in response, Hurry, my love, hurry without reasoning. Hurry with your last spark and warm all my future sons and daughters. The energy of love, dense as a comet toward the earth, only one sparks left around God. Near the earth, she looked around and saw that she was rushing after her spark, a small comet, and exclaimed the energy of love, turning to God. My God, why? Why did you not keep even one spark of mine next to you? And then comes the phrase of God, which shocked me. What did he say to the energy of love? Keeping it for myself means not giving it to my daughters and sons. I will stop to retell the book. I'll just say what happened and why I studying all this. Taiga Recluse says some words. I remember and then write down all. And then it starts to come true. All she said. The books are written. But she said the first. You write the book. It will read a lot of people. She said she didn't hide. She didn't say that she is some kind of sorceress. She showed the mechanism of how it is possible to influence the woman to man, man to woman, and how we can influence what is most amazing on society to change the world. Now I will remind you how it can be done. Probably, under certain circumstances, it can be done by anyone. But first, she drew the entire Russian alphabet on the shore. She did it after I said that I'm not a writer, and I can't write books, so people want to read them. Then she drew the alphabet and said, You see, Vladimir, this is the alphabet, and there are 33 letters in our alphabet, and all the books consist of these letters. I answer, Well, yes, books, of course, consist of these letters. But to get the book, these letters need to be arranged somehow. And then she says that I need to write honestly. You, when you will write, you do not hide anything, neither bad or good, what happened with you here. Neither bad nor good, just relax. Don't be afraid to be funny, misunderstood. And what happened to me there? Then, as scientists say, she kept the man, which is me, at the peak of feelings. The maximum feeling? Astonishment. Maximum feelings, fear, sometimes happened. Maximum feelings, attraction, men to women, but it was impossible to touch her. And all the time, the feelings were at the peak. Being in such a state, it is easy to remember everything. I wrote about all of this. And what is the impact on society? Why hundreds of thousands of people start to create family homesteads. And now, many analysts began to realize that Anastasia, can present a formidable power weapon to the world. She can create a community of people who will be able to disarm the planet. So she told me about a little girl who is able to explode ammunition in the distance. Many scientific institutions in the world are interested in all these statements. 
There is a book in the Almanac in which speak a man who sent their vision in four universities about what Anastasia said. What happens in four of the best universities in the United States? and received invitations from all four universities to come to America and study this trend, paid the fare, paid for accommodation for him and his family. He is there right now. How to answer the question, in what way she has such a huge impact on the society? She doesn't hide it in what way. I wrote what she says. I collected the best sounds from all over the universe. You're going to write, and I slightly rearranged your words and these sounds will enter the combination of letters. We know that each letter, when we pronounce, we pronounce the sound. It turned out she did a combination of some sounds of the universe in the book. She says they will act, and they became really powerful. This ability to influence the society, it is the strongest ability that exists in the world. Anastasia knows everything that was, starting from the creation. I'll show you a little proof or focus where we live now and what she knows. I haven't talked to Anastasia for a long time, and she explained why. In the book, remember, she said, I know how much dark forces collapses on me, but I outsmarted them. I will not help you using my ray, and I will disappear for a while. She said before that, a lot of the dark forces will collapses on me, and you, Vladimir, but I outsmarted them. I'm not going to help you some time. And they, the dark forces, confused for a moment, not understanding the logic in my behavior, my decision. And I, meanwhile, quickly lights by ray on people who will communicate with you, and they will come to you. I hold the light on your readers, and they didn't understand why I'm not helping you. But readers, feeling small rays, become the rays to shine into the space and to help to you, themselves, to you, and our time. And so I cannot communicate with Anastasia for a while, but Supreme Mufti of Russia gets up and says that this is the road home, Anastasia. And the Russian monk takes the books about Anastasia and goes on prisons in Siberia and gives them. Here in the Czech Republic, businessman, hotel owner, buys the books and distributes them in each room of his hotel and says, let people read them. A lot of entrepreneurs come to me. It is in Opava. When I felt really bad and it was difficult to stand, walk, arrives team from America and says, Vladimir, you don't look good. And I'm going with them to the Institute of Hippocrates. And I see this woman from America. She doesn't really like to talk about herself. I don't recall her name. She is a wealthy woman, a very beautiful woman. She has a good family. In the morning, we together, She's barefoot, and I could not walk barefoot, walking around Miami. She's walking barefoot on stones, eat only raw food. She has something to eat, but she taught her family, and I, the time that we spent there, really ate this perfect raw food, well cooked. But there is not such food in Russia and in the Czech Republic. Rather, there is the food, but there is no hand to cook it. It is necessary that every female hand had such ability and knowledge to be able to cook a food, such food really help. I talk with Grandpa. He has a good sense of humor. Once I got interested in famous businesses, those that Microsoft computers invented, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs said, when he was asked in an interview, he was asked, do you believe in God? And he said, I have never seen evidence of God's existence. How can I believe? But Grandpa is a man who can talk about the coolest philosophy with humor. And he told to me, Well, well, they are the entrepreneurs, as you say, engaged in programming, and are unable to see the evidence of God's existence. He said some harsh words. I showed him the flash drive from the computer. He said, Yes, they still have a lot to invent, to see what God is. I said, Why? He begins to explain. I told him, you see, the information is hidden, a huge amount of information. Well, not about the entire world. If it is insert in computer, to turn a computer on, then I see and can read this information. I can see information about how to sow a plant, how to care for it. He said, and you need electricity for this to turn it on? From where are you taking it? Buy in the store. The more information you have, the more expensive it is. He said, well, okay. 
I'll show you also a flash drive, but you can take it for free, and it contains 10,000 times more information than your stick, and pulls out from his pocket a grain of cedar nuts. If you stick it not into the computer, but in the ground, then the information contained therein will start to act, and a small spout will grow. Then this sprout, seeing the stars, the planets will begin to interact with them. He also has such information. Then this information will make sure that this tree will grow to a height of 40 meters, and it can lift water, moisture, out of the depths of 10 meters to immaculately topmost branches, which grows at the top. How do you think the pump raises it to a height the water? Then this tree will give birth to a nut, which give the person milk, turpentine, oil. One tree will be able to fully provide people with food and energy, and it will be able to do so for 500 years. And when it gets tired, it will drop off the ground nuts, which you call USB flash drive, and begin to grow up and act children of this cedar. I want to send to the great programmers in Silicon Valley and ask the foundation to do it, to each programmer three such flash drives in a little box. Let them try to think about it, how so much information for free you can find in such a small seed. Those peanuts the fund took in order, this is the first harvest of nuts, that each of you could take at least one grain in order for Slovakia is also something left. If I will continue to delve into their favorite subject, as she does everything, it takes time, but time is running out. Everything is strictly in order, all strictly by the hour. When I was preparing to travel here, you have very good, tender organizers. This is Valentina, and I would like to introduce you her husband. <laughs> and their beautiful daughter, Irina. They have been negotiating with the fund. They were preparing the meeting, the questions that most interested you. I mean readers. Choose questions that are very much interested. If you don't mind, I'll try to combine them into one question. Interested anything that's relevant to Anastasia? The transition to the family estate at once or gradually, saving a job in the city, at least one member of the family. How many children are born in the family homestead? Are there any cases where readers, after reading the book, trying to live out those feelings mentioned by Anastasia, then give birth to the children, the husband goes, and the wife is left with three or four children? Maybe there's something that you didn't mention in your books? What is the difference between family homestead settlement and eco-villages, country societies, and existing villages? And the question is very serious, a very important issue of love in the homestead, especially in the Czech Republic, where there are a lot of divorces. Sex on TV, in the internet, in books, manuals and magazines served as one of the main components of life. Gay marriage legalized in this year. Young people suffering without love. Even among readers of books, there are many who at the age of 30 cannot find soulmate. What if one family member takes information from the books and the other not? Saying that everything will solve the family estate will not help because people in homestead also get divorced. At meetings, people ask questions about love, why it happens, why these divorces happen. It is not only in the Czech Republic. I didn't know what to answer before. There are already about 400 settlements in Russia, not just homesteads, but settlements consisting of family homesteads, and there is something to analyze. And there are also sometimes divorces, but very rarely. What I want to say about love in the book describes rights of love, which exists for several millennia, at least 5,000 years. This ceremony does not belong to any religion, to any beliefs. This ritual tests a man and a woman how serious their feelings are and how much they will be able to live together. I will remind you and you'll understand. Look how is happening a meeting of men and women nowadays. Somewhere, somehow they meet. Where exactly? Maybe at work, maybe at the disco. But how man looks at a woman, what he sees, and what he suggests to do with her. If it's a more serious relationship, he suggests to marry her. And for what? And often, 
They already had intimate relations even before marriage. And what's the reason to get married? We can say, in order to give birth to children, what to do with these children, how to communicate with them, who will communicate. This is absurd. Sometimes a man sees a woman, there's such definition as sexy, wow, you look hot. This is a common desire, which can be confused with love. He likes her, that's all. He thinks, what if this is love? Then he started relationship with her, one year, two, and then he saw more sexy woman. He divorced with this woman and married the other. Sometime later, he saw even sexier, or not sexy, but younger woman. Maybe she's more interesting. And what if there is something new? And so proceed ad infinitum. That's why there are all these divorces, because future life is not modeled. The future life, neither men nor women, is not modeled. Ask the newly married couple, how will you live? They will reflect and say, well, we may earn money for apartment, maybe the parents, but it's not a life when people talking about the apartment. The situation has an impact on the wedding itself. I mean, wedding ceremony. How is a modern wedding going? He, she, come to the registry office, signed some piece of paper. Two witnesses confirmed that they had married. Then they sit in the car, for example, in Russia. They go through the city to the eternal flame and visit some of the sites then go all together to a cafe or restaurant where banquet is waiting for them. They receive gifts, some trinkets, household appliances, and go home. And we all used to it, and we think that's the way it should be. But it is simply preposterous. It is quite absurd. Compare to the rite of Anastasia. Young people met somewhere, went to the outskirts as before, danced, singed, and danced in a ring, met and fell in love. They thought that loved, and then it does not matter. He or she could first come and say, My beloved, I would create together with you a space of love forever. The same thing he could say to her. And what did they do next? They went to the outskirts and chose a place where they will create their own space of love. This designing of the future space could take months, years, or more time. They could go home, go back there, build a hut, and to spend a night in this hut, but don't think about intimacy. Don't think not because someone forbade them, but because they were faced with the greatest challenge. They did not think about intimacy. What is the greatest challenge? What does it mean to create a space of love? It was necessary to create the project, its model, a place where they going to arrange the house, the garden and plantings. Plant so that when the wind blew, not just the rustle of leaves, but the music could be heard. Who would examine them? It will make the groom and bride parents, friends, and residents of the settlement. This is exam. Can you imagine? They pass the exam to this commission, the most important of which is difficult to image. Not a professor of any institute takes this exam. If they do something wrong, they can disgrace to the rest of their life. That's why they were interested in, and when the project was ready, they were going to invite their parents friends, and acquaintances on the day of the wedding. On the wedding day, right? When they came to the house in some village, all understood that they are going to invite them to the wedding. They were invited into the house, showed them the farm. And some of these young honeymooners would say, oh, you have such a beautiful apple tree. This meant that this family needs to gift them a tree sapling. And in another house, they could say, oh, you have beautiful kittens. It means that in this family, they chose the kitten. In the third family, they had to call the horse anything. It means that they had to give. Then in Russian and other fairy tales will appear the magic wand, through which it is possible to get the castle, the edge, and the flowers. So it was, in fact, just look how easy it is, due to only one right. On the appointed day, all these people, friends, parents, gathered in this place where they made their plan for the future homestead. Space of love. The groom stood on a hillock and told where and what should grow here. When he called point on which apple tree will grow, the man who brought a tree sapling at the appointed time should plant a tree. And that person who brought cherry, plant cherry, and so on. When parents asked who will be crowned over that space, then the girl took the prepared wreath, stand up on this hill, and wore a wreath on the head of the elect. Here from ancient times somehow got the word 
the crown wedding. She put the crown on him. And then, when everything was planted, what happened? Took the guy away, took the girl away, the boy was taken by his parents, the girl was taken by her parents. They have weathered colossal exam. They have spent a tremendous amount of energy. They gave the young man a drink at home, and he slept for two days. Woke up, ate, and slept again. Same thing with the bride. And during this time, parents were transferred already prepared house and put on the place, which the young family pointed out, block house, put a table, a bed. And now, having slept two hours, he woke up, full of energy. Young man runs to this space, full of energy, where he is waiting for his girlfriend, wife now. He runs to her at dawn. Further, what they have, a love scene. No one has ever seen, no one knows. But it is not like those scenes of intimate, which is today. I have told you all this to try to get this ceremony back for today. I suggest to couples to take to sit opposite each other and say, let's plan out our future life. It should do the woman. Man, say to her, well, we have the children. Soon there will be grandchildren. You say, come on. All my life I have worked, earned an apartment, bought an apartment for their children. You say, let's plan the life. He will say, well, why? She will answer, how long do you think we have left? We are 60 years old. I want to live with you forever here. He'll answer, something is happening to you, something wrong. Well, let's try. Come on. They can try. Let's build another apartment. We are waiting for a grandson. Look, maybe we can sell this apartment. Let's get the smaller one. Let's help to our children financially. Whatever projects they're planning, eventually to reach their goals, they will only come to one thing. They need to begin to create a space of love that is not created in time. They need to start it now, even at age of 60, to live in it for a while and give to their children and grandchildren. Then under that cedar tree, which they will plant, will sit their grandchildren and to remember and in one of the children, which give birth to great-great-granddaughter, suddenly find that the copy of great-great-granddaughter of this woman who has conceived this space of love, and she will have the same habits that she had re-emerged in this space. That's how it is. Because it is metaphysics. Because it is love, the great energy. And according to the laws of physics, energy cannot disappear without a trace. I have strayed off topic just a bit. And you know how these young people who made the ancient wedding ceremony, they could not stop loving each other. You know why? Because the right is closely tied the man and the woman with new visions of love. Yes, of course, this man looked on a woman as a woman, but he, after they took the exam, create this space of love, begins to look at her as little pieces of a homeland. He identifies her with this space, this space in the eyes of this woman, his beloved women. Then, when they give birth to their first child in this space, he helps her to give birth. He buries the placenta. And here, he first sees his child, and he identifies his beloved with a child. When he looks at his beloved, he has three feelings. Feeling the love of a woman, the feeling of love for the motherland, to the space, and the feeling of love to the child. Tell me, which child is the most beautiful in the world? Good, beloved, which? It's your child, and you will never fall out, even if it is not two, three years old, and much more. That's why when he looks at his woman, which for 90 years, he don't see her as an old lady. He just really likes the new wrinkles that appeared on the face of her beloved. When he sees that it is not so, quickly runs away from the porch. He likes new walk his beautiful beloved. That's a space of love. I have strayed off topic just a bit. I told you this, and some of you thought, this is too fabulous, fantastic. What Anastasia does, she does with full commitment. She does it with full confidence that it would happen, and so it happens. Maybe you heard about it. I spoke at several conferences. An elderly man comes to the homestead. He is 70 years old or more. 
He puts up a tent and lives there for two years, even in the winter. He is sitting there with a notebook, writing poems, light the potbelly stove, trying to plant the garden. When somebody told me about this man, I went to him and asked, why are you doing this? What do you want? And he began to read a poem about the future of Russia, about me, about Anastasia, about his life. And when I was leaving, he said, Vladimir, you do not think I am quite sane. I just plan my space of love and will come to me and my Anastasia as she came to you. But most importantly, she really came to him. It was a woman, 20 years younger than he. They got married. She is wealthier. They built a house. The neighbors helped them. They planted a garden. And they visited events, festivals. It was obvious that they love each other. She could bring him a chair so that he was sitting. She cared for him, and he too. And everyone was happy about this situation. One day, when they had the housewarming party, I came to them. She asks, you know who my husband is? I said, I know a little bit. And she showed a military jacket. He was a hero of the Great Patriotic War. The entire jacket was covered with awards and medals. He was a colonel of the armed forces in retirement. When he died, she didn't bury him in the cemetery. She buried him in their family estate. After seeing this story, I saw what incredible power is hidden in Anastasia. She actually prolonged the life of this man. She gave him love. She brought him a beloved, I may say so. That's not the only one story. There are many more. I thought myself, it all depends on the woman. Now, if I look at woman, I do not want to point fingers. One life planned. If I look at another woman, another life planned. If I look at the third one, a little bit different life plan because she can play the guitar well. I think we need a plan to adapt this ancient rite for the modernity, make it for the young generation. In Russia, it is trying to repeat, but they can't ask experienced parents to help out, whatever. They can only repeat partly. What a great idea. I think that something similar will be in Prague. It turns out we need to introduce this ritual not only for the newlyweds, but also all people have to repeat it themselves. But you know what the change that needs to be done. There they invited parents and friends, and these older people are invited their children, grandchildren, and say to everyone, you give this and you give that. You give the kitten and you gave a dog and you will plant a tree. The conversation will start between them. Our grandparents are planning something, but this event will stay with them for a long time. Its paintings will remain for a long time and they will come to this place eventually, children and grandchildren. They will think about it. I wanted to tell you how you can return to your ancestors, how you can gather the whole family, but time is up. I am very grateful to you sitting here. You treat me somehow today. You are so kind. You have so much wonderful energy.